Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be showing you how you can use Windows Firewall to lock down your computer from access from the outside and also access going to the internet or outside of your internal network. Now, even uh, your internal network will have problems connecting to a computer that you completely lock down. So let's get started. So, uh, let me show you exactly what I did uh, in order to block internet access to just about everything on my computer. So if you have your little internet access icon here, it could so it could either be this icon here which would indicate that you're using a LAN connection or it could be a wireless icon indicating something like a cell phone signal bar. So if you right click on this icon, you hit open network and sharing center, you'll get this uh, window that pops up and it will show you how you're currently connected to the internet. If you have a VPN you may see another icon here showing another bridged connection um, but for most people this is what you'll see. Now down here you'll notice uh, we have some additional groups instead of the regular icons you see here. So down here we're focusing on Windows Firewall. Hit that. And in the Windows Firewall settings uh, yours may look a little bit different now but I'll show you how to get to this uh, stage. Uh, here what we want to do is we want to click uh, advanced settings. You could click turn on or off Windows Firewall just to see what it looks like and it will show you here um, what kind of settings you have. Uh, so uh, you can also block everything from here but it's not a very good idea because uh, you first have to set up your ACL or your access control list before you block everything or else you will not be able to be to use the internet. Okay, so uh, here we want to click on advanced settings. And in here uh, we're going to see a bunch of stuff. Um, don't really need to read everything, but you could, you know, just look around and see exactly what is enabled, what's disabled, what's being blocked, etc., etc. So here, uh, you'll see that everything pretty much has a mirror. It says Windows Firewall is on for all three. Inbound connections that do not match a rule are blocked, and outbound connections that do not match a rule are also blocked. Right. So what we want to do is we want to click on properties. So this will give us the options to configure these settings. So you can click this one or you can click properties. So if we click Windows Firewall properties, we'll get this box. And if we click properties here, we'll get the same thing. Right. So what we want to do is we have the three profiles here. The domain profile, which is your local network, your private, uh, your private profile, which is um, also on your local network but also um, if you have any extended network like VPN and the public profile which is going to cover anything having to connect to the internet. So in the first one we want to make sure these two are blocked. Inbound and outbound connections are blocked. right? And we want to change that for all three. Blocked, blocked, public profile, blocked, blocked. Okay. Once we do that uh, we will get this message for example, from Internet Explorer, Chrome, and any other application that accesses the Internet. So, if we get back here, what we want to do is we want to go to Outbound Rules. Inbound Rules, we really don't care what's coming in, right? However, uh, there will be certain applications that already have an inbound rule configured. You kind of don't really have to worry about these things. Uh, because the system automatically creates a profile to allow only certain trusted applications that have, for instance, a, a Windows, um, what do you call it? It's, it's like a certificate that shows that this is a, a, an authentic application. However, you may want to go in here and turn something off, like disable it. You can go here, right click and disable this rule, which is allowing, for instance, Google Chrome to allow DNS in not a very good idea for the simple fact that your computer will need to resolve addresses on the internet. So, you know, you can play around here, but it's not recommended. These things are here to allow certain things to connect that you most likely will use, like remote assistance. Some people still use that stuff. So 
If you don't use it, you can shut it off. But if you have problems, you're going to have to go back and find what exactly you shut off and turn it back on. All right. So that's for inbound rules. Now, outbound rules is where we're mostly going to live. As you see here, I've already set up some rules for certain applications, right? So I haven't set anything up for Internet Explorer. So that's why it is being blocked. Now, how do we set up, for instance, a vast browser, right? This is my secure browser that I'm using uh, to access the Internet. How do we set up these things in here? Well, uh, what we do is we want to set up the actual location of these things uh, so that the firewall will know which applications to allow to communicate with the Internet. So in order to get the location, there's an easy way which we can go here. Basically, you right click on the window, then you right click on the application name, which is Internet Explorer. Then we want to hit properties, right? When you hit properties, you will get the target, which is the location of the actual file that you're opening to launch Internet Explorer, right? So all you want to do is just copy this address right here or the location, hit cancel. And in outbound firewall rules or outbound rules on the top right, we want to hit new rule. Here we want to leave it at program. We're going to get a wizard here. We want to leave it at program. We want to hit next. In program path, we want to hit browse. And we want to right click in here and hit paste. This is the address we just copied for Internet Explorer. So we open that and it will automatically populate this location of Internet Explorer in the program path. Hit next. Now, this is where you configure whether or not you want to block or allow this connection. In this case, of course, we want to allow this connection. So we hit allow the connection, click next. It asks you which network profile you want to allow this application to connect to. We want to leave all of them checked, right? Because you, you really just need the public one. But in case you have an application locally that may use Internet Explorer settings, you want them to have access to all of these different network um, profiles. In here is where you want to give it a name. So I typically use iExplorer, right, for Internet Explorer, short. I don't really give a description. See here is optional. And when you hit finish, it pops up on your list right here, right? So now if we go back to Internet Explorer and we either hit F5 or we go in the address bar and hit enter, OK, so it looks like we have another Internet Explorer um, setting that we need to set here. So that's Internet Explorer 1. This is the main application. Let's check our task manager and look for Internet Explorer, right? So we go to I, I Explore. And here we have Internet Explorer, right? And if you notice here, we have two Internet Explorer um, programs. One is marked 32 and one is just marked iExplore.exe. So here we want to hit open file location. Actually, let's hit properties and see if it's, it'll bring it up. Let's go to open file location, right? And here we have, let's see what we have in our firewall settings, right? So we have program files, Internet Explorer, iExplore.exe. And let's go here. And we have program files, Internet Explorer, iExplore.exe. OK, so that's one location. Now, if we go back to the 32 version, let's go open file location. Now we have a different address, right? We have the x86 program files x86 address here. So what we want to do is we want to do a backslash and we want to do I E X and we want to copy this entire thing, right? We want to copy this entire thing and we want to go back to our firewall settings. We want to create another rule. So this was uh, the 64 bit version, which is has no x86 in it. We want to hit that new rule. Next, we want to paste this address in here. Now we have the x86 version. I'm going to hit next. 
I want to allow the connection. Hit next, next. I want to do I Explorer X86. Finish. Let's go back here. And here we have the two different Internet Explorers. Now, I know this seems a little bit complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Again, if you add a program and you don't see it in, as a matter of fact, you know what, let's go ahead and uh, make sure that our Internet Explorer is now working. And here we see we actually got to Google. So let's go back to our firewall settings and make sure we understand how we actually got here, right? So here we have Internet Explorer having two different file locations. One is x86. Don't really want to get into architecture here about you know what kind of file systems and so forth. However, uh, we have a 32-bit version right here, which is the x86 um, file, and here we have a 64-bit version because I'm running Windows 64-bit edition. So what you want to make sure is that if the program isn't working, you check to see if there is a 64-bit version or an x86 version that you did not apply an outbound rule for. Okay, so you really want to right click in your taskbar area, like a blank area here, go to task manager, which is what we have open here. And in some cases, you may need to click show processes from all users, right? And if we click that, it will give us a list, we can maximize this, it will give us a list of everything I sort by description, because it's easier to read for me and it's easier to find stuff rather than sort by image name which is the executable file right now I think we can actually can we set view set columns right and here we can we should have a location setting somewhere PID page memory uh, image path name Let's try that. And that should also show us the location of the files, right? So there we have the, the path location. And if we go to I, this is sort, this is sorted upside down. So is it? Nope. Uh, here we have Internet Explorer, right? We have both of them. And if you look, you see we have two different locations for Internet Explorer. So that's the, the one thing you have to look out for. You, there may be an x86 version and there may be one without the x86. And uh, once you get uh, these two in there, you will have no problem accessing the internet from that specific application. And this way, you do two things. One, you secure your computer in a very robust way. Not even your antivirus will be able to connect to the internet. Right now, I actually shut my antivirus off. I shut it off most of the time. Only if I have, you know, some issue later on, I really turn it on and do a scan. But for the most part, I keep my antivirus off for the simple fact of this. Uh, let's say you go to the internet and, um, you know, let's say, for instance, you, you caught a virus or a malware or anything. The first problem it will have is it will not be able to connect to the internet. And every infection that you have in the, you know, on a new computer, it tries to connect to the internet because it's trying to communicate with the hackers or the whoever is trying to get access to your computer. If it cannot access the internet, it is basically locked down on your computer. Yeah, it may make your computer a little bit slow or it may try to hijack another program, but for the most part, your information remains safe. That program will not be able to communicate with the internet. The only way something will be able to connect to the internet is by using Internet Explorer or Chrome or your browser, whatever browser you're using. And in that case, you would notice something trying to go to a different address or, you know, whatever it is. If you see something funky happening, then that would mean that, you know, something's on your computer, right? You, let, let's say you type um, msn.com and something else pops up other than msn.com, right? Uh, you might want to look into that. You don't really want to ignore the signs that something's wrong with your computer. But in most cases, this is not possible because 
that program is not able to access the internet. And if it's not able to access the internet, no one can control your computer remotely, they can't see your information remotely, etc., etc., etc. Now, I do not recommend using Internet Explorer. You know, a lot of people have been touting that it's safe and this and that. I don't trust it, especially here. Uh, this is an older version uh, for Windows 7. Um, it doesn't connect to the HTTPS addresses. By default, you have to put it in. Right now, it, it shows you the, the secure layer. Um, it also has some vulnerabilities that may be exploited. So I would suggest you use an updated browser like, you know, a Chrome based browser or a Firefox browser or an Opera browser. Um, or in some cases, if you use the, the Avast antivirus, A-V-A-S-T, um, you can, let's see, open a new browser window. Uh, what you can do, all right, let me open another window so you can see over here. Um, you could use the Avast browser and it's, it's a more secure version of your browsing experience and you don't have to worry about, you know, um, getting infected and so forth. But I think I've gone through the whole firewall thing so far. So if this was useful for you, I hope you like and subscribe to my channel and I'll be posting more how-to videos in the future so you can better protect your computer. <laughs> Sometimes I'll post gardening tips or what, just whatever the heck I find useful. All right, so y'all have a good day. Later.